Hey, 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 hey! Subscribing and liking the vids does go a long way on the channel. But what, what if you want to support me even further? And I have something for you, Acolytes. I have a Patreon with four tiers going up to £30 is the max, so easily affordable. And if you want to go a step further. Subscribing to my Patreon will give you many special benefits like early access to my videos and behind the scenes content. So, you are getting many gifts in return for supporting me and the channel. So the link is in the description and thank you for helping me in the long run. Let's get on with the video! Yay! How are you doing Acolytes and the old crew? Welcome to the Game Award 2022! Predictions and what I might think win or something like that. Well, I might predict though, Jeff Keighley is going to be a pain in the ass again, a real pain in the ass, but I mean he always is. Remember last year when he um, tried to call out the activism stuff, he didn't call it activism because you know the activism members on the board of the Game Awards, just forget that. He uh, called out the gamers and said that they're doing harassing, not the uh, big corporation. Like she asked women and getting away with it, having a hotel house, Cosby rape suite and stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully you won't do that shit again. Because that was out there. Anyway, moving on. So yes, the game was 2022s and there's a mighty fine game of some mighty fine games that came out this year. But uh, we're going to see what the nominees are. And every year there seems to be different categories, which is a bit odd, isn't it? And hopefully we get to see all categories this year. And on, on the actual server, not like the old side thing. Yup, that, that one. Because all the ads you goddamn have. I don't all those silly ads. We are watching the game in the war so good reveal trailers throughout it. Cut down on the ads. We don't want no ads. The only ads we want is probably the future games that are coming out and other stuff. That's all we want. That's all we want, Jeff. And probably you can have your friend here, Demo Kojima on. I mean he's your best buddy in it. Your best buddy in the world. As you claim to say. But anyway, anyway. Let's get into the nominees in Selby and let's get to the first one which is Game of the Year I think. Yes, Game of the Year which is A Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. <laughs> now, this is epic. Well let's start with the least one convincing here in Australia. Yeah, it's a good game, probably would be nominated, but that's all it is, it's a good game when you play as a kitty cat. And it's obviously there for the indie type stuff, but yeah. Don't know if it's there, but don't think it'll win, and neither will probably play Tale or Horizon Forbidden West. Because the prize Play Tale recommend Play Tale got a uh, sequel to be honest and Horizon itself. Also Xenoblade 3 I would Probably know more if I um well I haven't played the other Xenoblade, so I don't know anything about it. And I probably should get on that really, isn't I? Duh. But I like me playing no Xenoblade, but anyway, on to the two big ones which I think will be battling out like, you know, Chaos and Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> So let's start with God of War. Actually, let's start with Elden Ring in God of War. So Elden Ring. Basically, a mismatch of all from software games that have in the past mixed into this magnum opus they created and made Elden Ring. And some differences your weapon doesn't break. Glad about that. You want to keep your nice little weapon all around for the game? You can. Unless you're playing Dark Souls or Bloodborne and it breaks throughout it, then you know. And it's open world, which is quite surprising because if some things are too hard, like, you know, the tree sent and all that trouble with, you can just go somewhere else to level up, come back and defeat it. That's what I did. And the shots and the open views and stuff like that are amazing as well. And it's a very, very long game, but I'm still in the fittest it. I've got a wall somewhat long, but not as long as Elden Ring, because you... Because it's another quest marker, you don't know where you're going half the time. You're just running to side quest, side quest, side quest, side quest, and... You know. And if I was still playing, I'll go for the Rani the uh, witch ending, because Rani is best girl. Best witch girl. So yeah. Elden Ring probably may get it here. And the game of the year thing was this here. Game of the year. We all, we all, we cognizing, that we organize, recognizing, weird thing. A game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. 
and basically Elden Ring does that. Now on to God of War. Yes, if you play easy, it's going to be easy and if it tells you what to do. On easy, it will tell you how to do that puzzle. But, if you play God of War on God of War difficulty, you're basically playing it as an Elden Ring Souls-like game. Bosses and enemies will literally tear the shreds in a few strikes if you're not careful. And it follows, it does the same if it is the first God of War. Seventh God of War, where it is. Or the God of War 2008. But, it continues on, basically. And it does offer more, because it's got loads more side quests throughout the game, and then the ones you discover in the 2018 ones, you just leave them there. But when you want to get through this game, and so in chapters, more side quests, more side quests opened up, and you know, yeah. And it does further the story a bit. And, and basically, if you did put it on the hardest difficulty, it will become a from soft like game, because I watch Maximilian Dude does his play for it, and it's like, Difficult as hell, I'm not gonna lie. So basically, these two games here, Elden Ring and God of War, we battle it out for the god damn game of the year. So yeah, I don't think um, Horizon Field and West will get it. I mean, they don't really do anything but from graphics, really. It's more to games and just graphics, and I don't believe Play Play Tale Rec Room yet. With the last game was a bit was like, good at first, but they had playing Rap Tornado, which was a bit off-putting. Again, it's sort of a fantasy game, but a bit out there, you know, a little bit out there. But anyway, next category, which is I think Best Game Direction. Awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. The fuck's immortality. So best game direction, and again, I think this may be between God of War and Elden Ring. Stray could get this as game design in that is um the outstanding like it's nice techno techno uh, future with a catwalk and around it but again between God of War and Elden Ring because they do bring in good the game direction in the design. Elden Ring probably here, so I think Elden Ring might get that. Again, God of War could steal it, but I think Elden Ring might get that. Just get there, you know? Just get there. Because innovation in game direction and design, and Elden Ring has innovated, was innovated a lot. I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot of stuff. Anyway, my prediction there is Elden Ring. Next category, best narrative, which is between immortality again. What the hell's immortality about? First time I've seen it in this game. Again, so for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game, so that's between. Horizon Field and West, Immortality, God of War, Ragnarok, Elden Ring, which is a bit odd because the narrative is there at the beginning and you don't really see it until certain parts of the game and then the end. FromSoft is not very good with their storytelling. Gameplay, yes, but storytelling is way below down there. Utter crap. And Play Tale Rec I probably need to play that to find out first or what to play for, but yeah, again. I think my prediction is God of War, Ragnarok, because it. it there was a narrative that was in the 2018 Rapping Rock and it goes about Loki or the trailer sketch these uh, stuff of Loki uh, Kratos thinking he's gonna die or not and trying to become a better father you know he, that was the previous one but he's still trying to there Freya and all the other things I mean the narrative is always there in God of War Ragnarok it's like a spacey movie game it's a spacey meatball but yeah it's a uh, the narrative is constantly there in God of War Ragnarok, so I'm giving this to God of War Ragnarok and hopefully it does get it. Anyway, next category, Best Art Direction. Well, Scorn's gonna get this. The art is constantly there and Scorn is basically what the game's about, it's art. It is all goopy and pussy and fleshy and phallic. Very HR guy, yeah, but very, very phallic. Just saying. Look, look at the picture look. How can you tell that's not going to win best art? Best art? I mean come on. But it's here. Best art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. Yeah so basically here, well Elden Ring could get it. Because this has some like certain scenery in that that could get its best art. But here, here we go to score which I think I'm my prediction to win here, called Scorn, Alien, oh boy, Alien shit, 
Alien, boy, alien. Dark. It's them aliens, I'll bet my pension. And or Stray. Because Stray's art is like very retro, cyberpunky type thing with a cat going around it and the uh, robots are very unique in a way. Look, they've got little television screens. So, if it's not Scorn to win, then to me it's Stray. So, anyway, those are my predictions. Next category. Best score in music for outstanding music inclusive of a score, original song, or a licensed soundtrack. Well, you think it'd be my choice to be Elden Ring or God of War game, but bruh, Metal Hellsing is here. Do not see the metal that's coming for you. Metal Hellsing has literally has bands play for it, make the, make the music, and is there, and it's basically what the game's about, music. So while you're doing suiting and swiping like that, you have to bump your head to it to get in a turn and do boom, 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 boom like your head bang, boom, boom, boom. Basically, my prediction here is Metal Hell Singer. Apparently, Xenoblade does good music. I wouldn't know. I haven't played it at all. Like literally, but we should though. I have the first one. Am I probably missing out on something? These probably have all good music, but I'm going Metal Hell Singer here because, you know, it's all about that metal life, boy. So, best audio design, recognising the best in-game audio and sound design. I think all these cars get this, and I'm going with Gran Turismo 7 because, you know, people want to know they count cars to sound like their cars. Like, the oh my god, the sounds of a car! Oh, Jesus Christ! I'm not simple, my car! In-game car sounds like a car. Basically, <laughs> basically, it's Gran Turismo 7. Basically, again, it could go to Elden Ring or God of War. You know this. I don't know what I'm calling what you call Team Modern Warfare 2. It's just guns. But I'm going to trans Gran Turismo 7 on this because you know cars. Yes, yeah, so it's re recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. So yeah, cars. Don't hear the cars go <clears throat> on the asphalt. They want speed and speed in their noise. The noise! So, best performance. Awarded to an individual for voice out, overacting, motion or performance capture. Well, that's going to go to Chris Richards of God of War Ragnarok. If it isn't him, then it's going to go to the boy, Sonny Siljic. Siljic? Yeah, probably hit for him, because both of them have great performances throughout God of War Ragnarok. And they both get a good... Got Kratos' luck and Christopher Judge's uh, emotion of getting his son to do the right thing when he wants to do the other thing and he's deaf and that. Well, the Trace is like, and Sonny and Silver's his role becoming Loki and stuff like that. And also, Immortality's there again. What is that game? I don't need to check what it is, honestly. I don't know what Immortality is. Immortality? Anyway. Also, we've got Plague Tale Requiem here with probably Silent McBurney, probably plays. Alicia, I think I remember her name. And I see Bert who plays Aloy. But again, my other two predictions here either God of War Ragnarok with Christopher Judds or God of War Ragnarok with Sandy Siljic. They put on the best best performances here, so, you know. Also, he's a Star Trek actor. We all have a bit of Star Trek, don't we? Games or Impact? For a thought provoking game with a pro social message or meaning or message. I have not played any of these, anyone I know about is that's Dust Falls, that's, that's about a uh, robbery. Basically that's it. I was a teenage exocolonist, hindsight, and there's things in, yeah I don't know any of these, but I predict that's Gus Fall, Dusk Falls to win for anyone I know. Yeah I don't know any of these, so moving on, next category, Best Ongoing. So we've got Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite and Genshin Impact. Well, it's all between these three here. Because Fortnite is apparently still good on going, I don't know why people play that. Genshin Impact has got a weird and fucked up fan base, but that's a good game still going. And so is Final Fantasy 14, which can create really good characters. So, I think Final Fantasy 14 won it last year, but again, my prediction is Final Fantasy XIV, it's, it's got a good fan base and they're doing good work with it, the, along with um, Gets an Impact, but the fan base is a bit off-putting and, you know, but, you know, my prediction, Final Fantasy XIV, and I still haven't bought it yet, god damn it. Next category, 
best indie. Oof, this is a toughie. This is a spicy one. Because you got Stray. I haven't played Tunic at all in all these, but you got Stray, Sifu, Neon White is apparently both good, and Cold of the Lamb. But my pick says it would be Cold of the Lamb, Sifu, or Stray. Because Stray, as an indie game, is probably one of the best this year. Because I'm probably not playing the indie game, more AA in it, AA in anything, but. As the, as the uh, feel of an indie game with a little cat going through a little city. See through is a brilliant beat em up. That's all I know about it though, you do Kung Fu. Ha oh, ha ha ha. And you got Cold the Lamb, where you play as an evil little lamb trying to start a cult and, you know, you have to pick up poop. You literally have to pick up poop in it. Yeah, so, kind of a hard category, but I might either pick here either Stray, Seafood, or Cold to the Lamb. Could be even neon white or tunic as well, I see when you think about it. Anyway, is this for outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional stall, traditional popular system? And the pairing are quite um, big, so. Don't know actually. I thought so, the world was digital, a bit odd. Anyway, moving on. Those are my three picks. Next category Best mobile game. Where the fuck is Azure Lane? Best community support. Well, I think No Man's Sky or Final Fantasy 15, 14, he's saying 15, god damn it. 14 will get that. No Man's Sky, they've been putting a lot more effort into it since um, it came out. I keep trying to build place in it, but the, I think the glitch is over and the stuff all, like the rock keeps coming back again, which is annoying. Yeah, I think it, with me here is either No Man's Sky or Final, Final, Final Fantasy 14. I still need to play, I need to get back to No Man's Sky because I'm doing that. Holiday Destination series. I was supposed to be building a goddamn Wild West series. Well, not Wild West Town, and uh, that was ages ago. Probably need to get back into that. Mm. So, yeah, my uh, predictions are Final Fantasy XV, 14, and No Man's Sky. Moving on! Innovation and accessibility. We basically like uh, giving it to people that are. Uh, like disabled and stuff like that again I've been I'm disabled since I was born I had no problem playing games don't know why this needs to be a thing but I'm sure I, like, there's probably other people out there that need help because some people can't actually put on play control like that can I so you know <laughs> didn't know probably had some I thought over there someone played that uh, so it's Dust Falls, God of War, Ragnarok, Return to Monkey Island or Last of Us Part 1 yeah my pick is God of War, Ragnarok actually even though the last was part one, but I'm going to choose God of War Ragnarok because it has give some accessibility, so yeah. Moving on! Best AVR, AR, Red Matter 2, Moss Book 2, Bone Lab, Among Us VR, which is probably going to be winning, and after the fall. Oh, we're not into VR, AR yet, so Among Us VR, I don't really care about this yet. Wait until we get to like more futuristic stuff, then we probably give a shit about this. Next category, best action game, brother. Then um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 being best shooter. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's a activism member on the board of the Indie Game Awards in there, so you know a lot of money, money, grab, 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 put back, put back, sandies. Let's forget I said that. So yeah, uh, so it's Bayonetta 3, Call of Duty, Neon White, Sifu, or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge. You know, I haven't played. Any bayonetters yet? Again, I need to get on that. <laughs> so yeah, so Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is probably my pick here because I played it earlier in the year and I'm surprised it's not up for um, Game of the Year because it's that quite good of a side scroller and I don't really play side scrollers. So my pick here because basically go for like the whole Turtles like lore, you find like villains and stuff like that, and you basically get that to get to Shredder and you go to like different planets and stuff like that so well side scroller quite impressed me so I'm going to choose Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge and I don't know about these lot but you know I'm going with that next category best action and adventure for best action adventure game combining combat with transfer traverse on puzzle solving I must say stray here because that game makes the pussy tight Forget I said that. 
but yeah, but as I said, Stray um, might win this because there's an action adventure game and has puzzle solving and stuff like that. But it's maybe another game that goes to God of War Ragnarok because that game is a whole action adventure, straight to straight to fast, start to finish, and there's a whole ton of puzzles in there. I've been watching playthroughs and there's tons tons of puzzles. And loads of things, moth bosses to feed, and that's a puzzle itself. So, yeah, I haven't played Horizon Bid and Wish yet. I mean, I do have that game right there in the play PS5, but unlike God of War Ragnarok, I'm not inclined to play Horizon Bid and Wish, so that's why I didn't think it would be winning game of the year. And also, there's Plague Tale Rec Room. That is an adventure, but you know, I don't know what Tunic is about anyway, so I probably need to check Tunic out. But yeah, I think my predictions here is either God of War Ragnarok or Stray, because they're both. Bring the action adventure star boy. Oh yeah! Best role playing for the best game designed with rich player character customization and progression, including massive multiplayer experiences. Are these all multiplayer? Well, again, I think go to Elden Ring on this one. You can play as any characters. You can go bad. You can go good. Like the ending, you can go bad or good. Like Rani, sort of like evil. Dung eaters, completely bad. I don't think I've ever met Dungy yet, but he's completely bad. And he can do other sorts of like character classes. He's got like you can get like a wizard and fire a big giant blast if you're making magic up. I mean, you do a lot of Elden Ring for a FromSoft. So I don't know about Living Life, Pokemon Legends Aquarius. I didn't really get that because it looked a bit naff. Also, he released two Pokemon games in this year, which is a bit odd. Triangle Strategy and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So. It was between Elden Ring or Xenoblade here, but I'm predicting Elden Ring, so yeah, that had loads of role played in it. So anyway, next category Best Fighting Mate, yeah. Let's stick a mate in our song. Sifu. Uh? One one things don't belong here, they seem out of somewhere. Yeah, so Sifu is a bit more of a beat em up than a uh, fighter. So that's odd why it's there, but it's probably going to win, isn't it? But, if it? but to me that doesn't count, so... So between the Elite's lot, the King of Fighters 10, I guess. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which I never played in got, which is odd. And DF2, I'm going to choose Multiverses. You know, that was, I tried to play that and the interface was shit. But in now, oh, all these, it's probably Sifu that's going to win. But you know, that doesn't really belong, because that's a beat em up. These are fighters, like one on one, boom boom, together like that. See if it's like an at an adventure type, beat em up. So, weird category this, but I'm beginning to predict Sifu, or the or multiverses, either of those two. Next category Best Family and Boys in Nintendo Show. Got Nintendo, 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 well, that's Ubisoft, but it's Nintendo related. And Kirby would have got a Nintendo, but my prediction, you know, probably wasn't going to win was Nintendo, Nintendo here, Nintendo, 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 Nintendo. But my prediction is Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga. I haven't finished it yet, but I've finished a lot of games this year. I see, bit of a problem. Yeah, so the, yeah, I'm going to go with this because it's probably the best Lego game, one of the best Lego games that has come out. So yeah. I was a single game by Kirby, I mean, best, best family, good family game, but it looks shit. Apparently Nintendo Switch Sports is supposed to be shit too, so... There's a load of Nintendo crap, so anyway. Star Wars, the Lego Star Wars, or Lego Star Wars, the Skywalk Star Wars. Anyway, next category. Best Sim Strategy. I know a lot about Sim and I know a lot about Strategy. Best best focus on real-time or turn-based simulation or strategy gameplay irrespective of, of platform. I know about Paradox the, the development and, 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 and interactive because I played um, Crusader Kings 3 but I don't know what Tor is about but I do know what it is. And there's Total Warhammer 3, Two Point Campus, Mario again. You know I might go for Dune Spice Wars. You don't really have a game based on like a movie like Dune do you? That came out due to the June movie, so you know. My prediction here is June Spice Wars. I mean, I haven't played any of these, but June Spice Wars recently came out on um, Xbox Game Pass, so I could try that. So, yeah. 
My prediction here, June Spice Wars, boy. Let's get in. Next category. Also, June Spice, but hang on. A June Spice Wars winning, you gotta let the spice flow. If that's a line from the movie, I don't know, but you know. I don't know the movie. Best sports racing. Yeah, next. Best multiplayer. Um, how's it gonna be? That's not really tough. Oh, what's two? Again, you have an activism member on the board. He's gonna get through a little bit of dos dos was was and get him in there. You know, get activism on the board. So, yeah. Oh, uh, was two. I mean, it's not a perfect but free game. Not gonna lie, it's a bit naff. I prefer the loot boxes than anything. But you know, now people don't seem to like it. I think I was two is gonna get that. So, so that's my prediction to win. So next category. Contact Creator of the Year, <laughs> this is an odd one. Narbellion, who was a Twitter user but he quit because something happened, we didn't like Elon Musk or something and didn't like have enough money from it. But we need a content creator when he already did was share the news. It was the best news share of gaming news, but that's all we did. So odd thing there. Okay, the other two I know is Ludwig and Cole Jacobs and he's creams and he's an idiot at times, but the bit of him in the account anymore, he quit though. Imagine if he came back in all glory if he won this, but yeah, but uh, I did choose the billion, so. Big category, this, isn't it? Next category. Day's best debut indie. And again, a stray, I'm gonna choose this, as that pussy was tight. Last joke I'm making of that. But yeah, I don't. And, well, actually, Vampire Survivors is supposed to be good. That is made by Jim Sterling or Stephanie Sterling, whatever they called now. Well, that's name by the channel name, but I think it's Stephanie. But yeah, see, with Vampire Survivors apparently they're supposed to be good. Or Stray, because you know, nice little kitty cat again. But they're our best uh, indies here, actually. I don't know what Norco is, or I've seen Neon One Tunic, but Stray. Or vampires and viruses, so that's my predictions. Anyway, next category Best Adaptation, and this is a spicy one. Minus Uncharted, get out my Uncharted, get out of this category. Yeah, so you got Song of the Hedgehog 2, The Cuphead Show, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, or Arcane League of Legends. Well, I'm going with Cyberpunk Edge Runners here, General Oh, and maybe Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Here are those two because they're the ones I watched. But I'm going with Cyberpunk Edge Runners. That's probably one of the best studio trigger things they've released in ages since Dial in the Franks. So it's got a lot of emotion and I'm doing a review of it for next year, so we'll see my thoughts on that here. But yeah, Cyberpunk is a lot of uh, extreme good animation, emotional settings and you know drama in it, so my my pick here is Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Next category Most Anticipated Game. Recognising an announced game that has demonstrated illustrated potential to push the game medium forward. Well, that's not Starfield. Have you seen that shit? Yeah, I mean, no, that's not going to push forward anything. Just want to go on planets? There, go on planets. It's been done before, but. Hmm. So yeah, I think my either choice here is either Resident Evil 4 or Final Fantasy 16. And we've only seen a little bit of Resident Evil 4 from those trailer things, but my pick here is Final Fantasy 16. Is that looking very mysterious? And the gameplay is looking damn fine too. Damn fine, like a nice pork rib on a Sunday night. That thing will be delicious. That smoking hot rib out on the Texas sun. Get your smoke hot ribs today. Where am I going with this? But yeah, Final Fantasy for, for 16 here is uh, my choice because it's very long, one long way title, and also the place there's another one missing. I swear there is. Another game coming up next year. Is there one missing? Next category! Best esports game, moving on. Best esports athlete, moving on. Best esports team, moving on. 
Well, oh, goddamn esports. So nobody cares. So this is where I'm probably going to end it, as I don't really give a shit about esports, and I don't know where the players' vote is going to take. Players' voice vote is going to take place, but I'm um, so a few days before um, game awards, which is not next this the week, the week after, I think. I believe I forgot. Anyway, so my predictions on the reveals. Well, I know there's going to be a lot of ads. Because there are always a lot of ads of these things. You have to sit through all these boring ads and get to the other stuff. Oh my god. All these crappy ads. Do we need them? But we all just want to see game trailers. And also, I think we'll see a bit more Final Fantasy 16 there. And maybe Final Fantasy 7 Remake 2. Rebirth, I think. That's all I'm going to know. Maybe some fight games or stuff like that. But, uh... Can't really predict things, can ya? There'll be something all crazy and out, out there and probably didn't, haven't actually heard of before, so... Yeah, anyway, so we'll leave those with your predictions the next time. So we're going to end here then. These are my Game Awards 2022 predictions. And I may do a yearly thing of this, maybe, I don't know. I think about it. My mind changes a lot. The same, so yeah. Hopefully I can watch this, but apparently it's on a Thursday morning to me, like late, like middle of the night for me when this first starts so I'd rather watch this in the morning when I wake up lovely because I'd like to watch them like you know in the evening oh maybe I should be active but obviously I can't because all these awards and showcases are annoying times for me but yeah so I will watch this at some point don't worry so yeah so if you enjoyed my predictions to the game awards 2022 and one more don't forget to want to done this and smash the like button boys stay spooky Toodles! Uh... Hey, you want some cool merch? Then head down to my Teespring store where all these designs are made by me. Ranging from mugs, hoodies and t-shirts. And even from catchy slogans that I have made myself. Oh yeah, some tasty stuff. Get it all today.